in this nitty gritty prime time let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at mahjong time today's topic it's a debut i guess you could say strategy by wall speed to ready we're going to talk about let's see milestones guidelines these are all guidelines of course because things change depend on depending on what happens during a game but i think these are some really good guidelines to help keep a good pace in the game and manage expectations you'll have to let me know what you think about this topic thank you so much for watching my videos channel members thank you so much for supporting Maj life and moderators thank you so much for helping monitor the chat we are opened up to subscribers, so if you're a subscriber of Maj Life, you can chat during live streams this week. We're testing it out to see if we can keep the trolls at bay. Is that how that saying goes? The trolls, we want to keep the trolls away. Anyway, let's get started. Welcome. Thanks for being here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to the presentation. I don't remember how long this is. It's nitty gritty style, so it's not too long. We'll get to gameplay with commentary in just a little bit. Okay, speed to ready. Again, this is these are guidelines. But I've been using these guidelines for a while now, and it feels really good. I think it makes sense, and it feels good. So you'll have to let me know if you try these out. Speed to ready. The idea is that it will help pace hand development. And also, it's you're going to need to monitor your position along the way. And we're going to talk about milestones. So hand development, position, and milestones. First, we're going to talk about hand development. When you get your dealt hand, that's just the beginning of the journey. You are going to, in a series of passes, have an opportunity to transform your dealt hand. And this is one reason why the Charleston is so important. And if you can, do both rounds because you are getting essentially three tiles at a time in each pass if you consider that three picks from the wall this is why it is what i call a hand development accelerator you can really transform your dealt hand if you leverage the power of the charleston the idea with hand development for american mahjong is to target the strength of the hand the strength of the hand is going to be basically using your tiles for a category on the card but because american mahjong is a game of multiples if you target multiples you're going to set yourself up for success so target multiples if you don't have multiples you want to target the predominant pattern which will be one of the categories on the card and then when a multiple forms target the multiple reassess gather tiles to support the multiple and play a category that will use most of your tiles you're going to gather tiles for whatever category you choose, regardless of suit. There are way more hands for mixed suits than there are one suit. So just gather every tile you can for the given category, whatever category you chose. When you run out of discards, that's when you decide, am I going to play a one suit hand or a mixed suit hand? And you'll whittle out discards to keep going. Then you're going to build. Once you have your gaps filled, you build bigger multiples, pair Pong Kong, Quint maybe even. And along the way, you're gonna defend. Target, gather, build, defend. That is the, the process of hand development. Consider those things as you play the game. And we're gonna talk now about strategy by wall. And I wanna give a quick shout out to Tom Sloper of Sloperama. He's the guru that I followed when I very first learned to play American Mahjong. And I 
responded well to his strategy by wall and I made it my own. So some of those ideas that originated with Tom are in here, but for the most part, my strategy by wall is quite different actually, which I'm really excited about. So the first thing that I want to share is that the first wall, when you, when you first set up the game, you have four walls. The first wall goes away when you deal the tiles. Then you're left with tiles in people's racks and this short wall. That short wall is the begin game. So while you're doing the Charleston, you have that short wall there waiting for when East discards their first tile. During the Charleston, this is when you can exponentially transform, really just transform your dealt hand in a series of passes from your opponents. Then you start on the begin game when East discards their tile. So you have a short wall to go through. Between the Charleston and this first wall, a lot of hand development can occur even to the point where you're maybe just three or four tiles away from a complete hand. That's how powerful the Charleston is. After the begin game, we have the third wall, which is called the middle game. And then the fourth wall is the end game. So we have the preliminaries where you deal the tiles. Then we have the pregame, which is the Charleston. And then we have the begin, middle, and end game. So now I'm going to share tactics that you can use throughout the game, but most importantly, during the Charleston. Everybody ready? The first one is to optimize. You want to target multiples, just as I shared, pair Pong Kong. If you start with them, train your eye to target the multiple. Start there. It really simplifies decision making, in my opinion. Here we have one, three, five. So I would play little odds. The reason why this works is because American Mahjong, just the way that the hands are designed, even from the onset in 19, what is it, 1936 or 37 until now, it is a game of multiples. Big multiples are Pong Kong and even Quince. 84% of the hands use big multiples. 61% have pairs as well. So multiples are in every hand. Even in singles and pairs, you have multiples. So focus on multiples. You want to train your eye to target them. Also, if you look at the patterns on the card, one suit hands are 27% of the hands on the card. So 27% of the hands on the card make up one, per, one suit. And then mixed suits are in 69%. So while you're gathering tiles, keep tiles regardless of suit. And then when you run out of discards, then you can decide if you're gonna play a one suit or a mixed suit hand. The other thing that I wanna share is this tactic, optimizing with punks and kongs, or I'm sorry, pair punk kong. Sometimes you'll get a kong. In um, the earlier episode today, I got a pung of one cracks, and I tried to build around them, but it didn't quite work out, and we ended up playing con a consecutive run hand. Sometimes that will happen, but if you you target multiples, you will optimize your potential to develop a hand quickly. The next tactic is called maximizing maximizing is when you use most of your tiles for whatever category you have. Sometimes when you get your dealt hand, you will not have multiples. So you want to target the predominant pattern and use most of your tiles. So in this example, we have a lot of three, six, nine. So we would be able to maximize until a multiple forms. And then we can maybe optimize and maximize. So anytime you develop a new multiple, when you start out with a hand like this, you want to reassess, reassess, target the multiple, and then play a category that uses most of your tiles to support that multiple. That is the ideal 
methodology or or ideal strategy, overall strategy for American Mahjong, just based on game design. Another thing that you could do, this is the third tactic, it's streamlining. This is when you play consecutive run. And the reason for that is because you have up to nine tiles in three suits to work with. So those numbered tiles dominate the game. And in this particular widespread, we do have some three, six, nine in there. No sixes though, but we have three, four, five. So I would focus on three, four, five until a multiple forms and then reassess. But we could streamline with these tiles as an example. And the reason why consecutive run is so powerful, it's primarily because of the tile efficiency. And if you missed the nitty gritty basics from one to three today, I highly recommend that you watch that video because we focused on tile efficiency and why consecutive run is such a powerful category. For one thing, besides tile efficiency, which is in that previous nitty gritty session, we have 11 hands in the consecutive run category, which is second to odds. However, there are consecutive runs throughout the card. So when looking at consecutive run potential throughout the card, there are more options than even odds. So consecutive run has that built in efficient, um, really agility is what it is because of tile efficiency plus options. The sheer number of options is huge compared to the other categories. When you're thinking about the tag, these tactics that I've shared, if you stack them, you'll have a power play. Optimize, maximize, and streamline. If you can do all three tactics in a hand, you have a really good potential to be a front runner for that game. So we're going to now talk about the milestones. And you, after the Charleston, right before East discards, you want to quickly assess your position in the game. If you think about a race, you have a race where you're on the track with other players or drivers, what, what have you. You want to assess your position and then apply tactics based on your position. And also consider taking risks based on your position. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Is everybody with me? Let me just double check on. I want to double check on sound and everything everything okay can you guys hear me okay i probably should have checked in with you and my my ipad is locked up i don't know what is going on here okay you can you hear me Recently. Okay, here we go. All good. All right, here we go. So assess your position. If you have more than four discards after the Charleston, you're likely going to be an underdog for that hand. You want to take a low risk approach until you have a stronger hand. No gaps, few weaknesses. If you have four discards, you're likely a contender for that particular game. Take a moderate risk approach as you expedite hand development. And if you have less than four discards, you're likely a front runner. You're going to expedite hand development regardless of risk. You're going to push to win hard and fast. And you can take risks because you're probably out ahead of everybody else. So watch the wall and assess your position and bump up or back at these milestones 99 tiles remaining that is when east discards then we have 70 tiles remaining which is about two or three picks in from the middle game and we'll talk about these by the way 70 tiles remaining is the sweet spot for switching hands in my opinion 
Then we have 60 tiles remaining. That is the middle mark of the game. And that is the ideal time, the sweet spot for Joker exchange, the Joker bait tactic uh, coined by Tom Sloper of Sloperama. Then we have 40 tiles remaining, which is the end game. So these are the milestones that you want to think about as you pace yourself and you want to continually assess your position in the game based on what is happening at the table. And we're going to have opportunities to do that. I'll demonstrate how to continually assess your position based on what is happening in the game. So we're going to look at a couple of examples before we get to the actual gameplay with commentary, just so that you can know what to watch for. So if you look up here in the upper right corner, I have a bird's eye view of a table with the walls, just showing the walls. There aren't going to be any discards because it's too hard to do. I might have to hire someone to do that for me. But uh, these are the wall, the wall in play. We have the first wall, the short wall. So this would be an example of our dealt hand. We have one, three, five, seven, nine in cracks. Pair three, pair five, pair seven, pair nine. Lots of multiples in here. We have a hand with no gaps, but we have five discards. Because we have five discards, we're going to be an underdog, even though we have a hand with no gaps. There are weaknesses in here. We have a one crack that needs to be a pair, and we have a five crack that needs to be a calm. So if we were to draw a five crack or a joker, I would say we, and then discard one tile, I would say we could bump up to being a contender because that five crack, then we could call, we could call for the three, the five and the seven, if we were to get a joker or a five, and then we could be maybe ready to win on a one if we don't draw it between that good pick for the five and then the one. So that is just a sh short example of how your position can change based on your picks. And when you pick keepers in the first wall, you can move from being an underdog to a front runner if you get three or four keepers out of that short wall. So even though you may have a hard time right after the Charleston, take heart and have no fear because just a few good picks from the wall and your position can change. Here's another example. We have winds and dragons concealed. We have seven bam pong, nor or south pong, and then we have a pair of east. So we have an extra east if we play that concealed hand. So we would be a contender in this example because we have an extra east, seven dot, nine dot, and a nine crack. Otherwise, we have a hand with no gaps. Now, here we're going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. We're going to have to draw well because this would be a concealed hand. So if you're playing a concealed hand, you got to really watch the discards and make sure that your potential is not impacted based on exposures and discards, especially if you can leverage jokers. Like in this case, we have the East and the West in hand, so we can use any number of jokers. And that's one reason why I think even though it's a concealed hand with three discards after the Charleston, we'd be a contender because we can use jokers. And you can obtain jokers either from the wall or through joker exchanges. Okay, here's another example. We have a like number hand, and this would be, again, in the... Uh, begin game. So we're right after the Charleston. We have no gaps for the like number concealed hand. So we would be a front runner on this one. Only two discards, but it's a concealed hand. Since we have one green and a red, we only need a, a white dragon. We have a couple of jokers and we have the pair of flowers. I'd say we'd be a front runner on this one. Just a couple good picks and we'll be ready to win. Here's another example that I'd like to share because another tactic comes into play with these particular tiles. We have one, two, dot, three, four, crack. This would be the second hand down on the right. We have a pair of twos and then a seven, dot, five, bam, green. So technically those are discards, but the two crack, that would be joker bait. And that could potentially help you 
get jokers into your hand, especially if you're playing a hand of least resistance like this, you can really change the, the pace of the game with a successful joker exchange with that joker bait. So even though we have five discards, that joker bait is, is a potential help. And therefore, you can kind of adjust your expectation as, let's say, a contender with five discards because it's joker bait, you could be a front runner. Now, that is dependent on whether or not the twos are wanted. If a two crack is discarded in the begin game and nobody takes it, then you might bump yourself back to being a contender until you're able to pung and kong and develop this hand a little further. So now let's talk about pace. You want to pace yourself. By the end of the that short wall, you want to commit to a category. Commit to a category by the end of the first or that second wall. In the middle of the middle wall, commit to a hand if you haven't already. At the end of the third wall, be ready to win. At the very beginning of the end game, the fourth wall, assess risk. Look at where you're at and decide if you're going to push to win or fold. And that's where this push fold judgment comes in after maybe two or three picks. So when that fourth wall goes out, do some risk assessment and decide within a couple of picks if you're going to push to win or fold. So those are the milestones where you can pace yourself. So again, looking at the, the start on the left, commit to a category by the end of the second wall or the first wall, commit to a hand by the middle of the game, be ready to win by the end of the third wall. At the very beginning of the, be the end game, do a risk assessment, and then a couple of picks later, decide if you're going to push to win or fold. Let's talk about the push fold judgment. Let me just touch base with everybody. Does anybody have any questions yet? Or shall we can kind of pause before we get into gameplay with commentary if anybody wants to do a Q&A. Otherwise, I'll keep going into push fold judgment. Okay, I'm going to go forward. So push, push fold judgment, what does this mean? When you're ready to win in the end game, you need to assess the potential of getting your winning tile. Look for your needed tiles in the discards and exposures and consider if it's being held by your opponents. Because your opponents could be using your tiles or maybe they folded and they know what you're playing, so maybe they're keeping your tiles. Those are some things that could be happening at the table. If you think your potential of getting your winning tile is slim, consider executing a fold plan. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. If you think your winning tile is in the wall or it may be discarded by an opponent, execute a push plan. Discard the riskiest tile first and accept the consequences if you happen to throw the winning tile, then that's let that be okay. If you're ready to win, you've got a couple of front runners at the table at that point. It's you got to let it be okay. It's okay if somebody else wins. But if I'm ready to win, I'm going to play to win. That's just my nature. And I don't know about you. I think some of this depends on playing styles, which we'll talk about in another nitty gritty primetime Let's Play live stream. If you think an opponent has the winning tile, or if you think that you have the winning tile for an opponent, so let's say someone has two or three exposures and you know you have their tile and, and they're likely going to win with you discarding it, you just have to consider how you want to move forward. You got to count the cost of discarding that risky tile and then execute a plan, whatever that may be, whether you fold or you push to win and discard it anyway. 
If you fold, keep the riskiest tiles in your hand, break up your hand, and then discard as safely as possible. If you're going to play to win, push to win. So let's talk about how you can determine how risky a tile is when you pick a tile from the wall. On the left, we have the likelihood. Improbable would be risk is likely to occur. Possible risk likely to occur. Oh, I'm sorry. Improbable is risk unlikely to occur. Possible is risk is likely to occur. And then probable is it's most likely to occur. So there's increasing likelihood that you have a, a risky tile in your hand uh, that maybe you picked from the wall. Now we're going to talk about impact. And these two together can help you decide whether or not you want to push to win or fold. So we first have the acceptable impact where an opponent maybe has no exposures. So you really have a hard time figuring out what hand they're playing. If you draw a tile where none are visible, that might be a, a probable tile. But if nobody has exposures, well, then you, you really have no, no other variables to base the decision on. So that would be an acceptable discard, even if none are out. A tolerable impact would be if an opponent has one exposure. Then it goes up from there. Unacceptable, opponent has two exposures. And intolerable, an opponent has three exposures. Because the more exposure someone has, by process of elimination, you can figure out what they're playing. And you can use that information to help you figure out the likelihood of you giving someone the ability to either further develop their hand or maybe even give someone the winning tile. If you have a tile in the acceptable, improbable, and possible range, that's a low impact. So the risk is, is low in that case. And then it goes up from there. So if it's a probable tile in the in, in, uh, acceptable and tolerable range, that's going to increase. You're going to be at a medium risk level. And it goes up from there. So you want to stay away from the unacceptable and intolerable impacts. If you have a tile that is unacceptable or intolerable with that kind of an impact ahead of you, you want to consider folding. So think about or, or visualize this matrix while you're playing the game, especially in the end game, when you get these risky tiles, especially when your opponents have multiple discards. The whole reason why I share all this is because the smarter you play, the luckier you'll be. Chin dab. Okay, we're going to play Mahjong now, and I'll demonstrate all these tactics and milestones and the risk assessment process. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I'm happy to answer questions. I'm going to launch Mahjong time now. Incidentally, I'm a affiliate partner at Mahjong time and you can get a 30 day VIP trial there. If you haven't tried it yet, send me an email. You can find my email in the video description. And if you decide to continue with a subscription, I will get a small commission. So I thank you for your support. Okay, let me share my screen and we'll play. Here's a table right here. First game. I see multiples. I see one, two, six, nine. Guess what's in six, nine? Or six, nine is in like uh, three, six, nine. But we could also maybe play five through nine. So here we have five through nine. Here's a three. 
We have two clear discards. I would not pass two dragons. I would not do that. I would probably keep the three dot and let the eight bam go. Okay, so we're maybe playing three, six, nine or five through nine. We don't have to pick a hand till we run out of discards. If we play three, six, nine, we'd be optimized. If we play consecutive run, we would be optimized and maximized. We picked up a five dot pair. Here's an eight, five through eight, no seven. That would be a gap. I would not keep that one, even though it it's, matches most of our, well, really, we have six tiles, seven cracks, but we don't, we have a pair of sixes. We can't use the one. I would let that three go at this point because we have a five dot pair. So with a five dot pair, five, seven, let's, let's see here. The eight dot, I would probably let that go. Eight dot, wait, five, six, seven, eight. We have a hand in here with no gaps. Five, six, seven, eight. Oops, wrong tile. Okay, let's let the white dragon go. I typically don't pass white dragons, but our hand comes first. We do have a little bit of five, seven, nine in here, but if we get a seven crack, I think I'd play five through nine. We have tiles we can pass. I would not keep the red dragon. That's really not helpful at all in this case with these the tiles that we have. The five dot may be joker bait. Although holding Joker bait in the Charleston can be an encumbrance. We have a six dot now. Five, six, five, six. Five, six dot, five, six crack. We could use the nines as Joker bait. We definitely want to keep going. The one can go. The dragon can go. I think here I would probably let the eight dot go can't keep it all we have five through nine so we're optimized by targeting multiples and we're maximized because we have all five through nine right now we've given up the one in the white dragon so really that eight even fits into our range five six five six is probably what i would focus on now Five, six, five, six. Six hand down under consecutive run, unless we get a seven crack. We got a four, not helpful, even though it's pretty. I would pass it on because we have five dot and a six crack. That four crack, even though it looks pretty with the other cracks, it's not helpful. We need big numbers, five through nine. We've got a pair. <laughs> Somebody gave us a pair. Okay, well, let's just think about it. If we had a flower, we could play four, five, six mixed suit Kongs. I think what I would do here is pass the seven and break up the four. This is an example of where the four BAM would be an encumbrance if we tried to keep it. We could pass blind and keep it, but even if we get if we get keepers, we're probably not going to be able to get that four BAM to 60 tiles remaining. So it's really not good timing for Joker bait. Uh -oh. Okay, look what we ended up with. Seven crack. We have five through nine, no gaps. Or we have five, six, five, six. They want two tiles. We could pass two. I would pass the four BAM in the white dragon here. We have two hands with no gaps. Two hands with no gaps. That means we have four discards with joker bait. I would say we're going to be three dogs. We're going to be an underdog here. 
I think. Sound wind. Unless we can pick really well before that 80 tiles remaining. This will be a good example of if we can get good keepers Why in this been? begin game. So 99 tiles to 81 tiles. Oh that God. is the begin game. The first, the second wall after the tiles have been dealt, Easy which is in. what we're looking at here. So hopefully in the next Seven two or three characters. picks, that would have been one of our tiles. Eight dots. We would need to Kong that. So I would probably lean more to five, six, five, six, and use the nine crack as joker beat. We're at 90 tiles now. So we have about two more picks before nine we're in the, the middle game. One dot. So far, only one of our tiles is Four out. Characters. If we decide to play five through nine in one suit. One dot. The only tile we can call would be a six crack for a pung. One bamboo. And I probably wouldn't call it if it goes down. Okay, we're at 84 One tiles. Dot. So we'll be in the middle game for our next turn. Nine so dot. we're still an underdog. So that means we need to take moderate risks. Seven bamboos. Moderate risks. Which would be the reason why I wouldn't call a tile. Two it would be very dots. risky to call a tile based on where we're at right now. Nine Not three. risk in the sense that our opponents can benefit, but risk in the sense that we'd be committing Eight too characters. soon for a weak hand. That's the risk. Red dragon. Let's see if we can get a keeper here. No, we're getting little numbers. Two dots. Eight bamboos. So we have a couple of eights. That's, uh, let's see, a couple of eights, a couple of nines, eight a couple dots. of sevens. Seven, eight, nine. Seven dots. Okay, let's see. We'll let the four go. Four characters. A white dragon is out. Two, three. Four dots. I think we should let the year tiles go. White dragon. There's no hesitation on the white dragon. So white I don't win. think anyone's playing a year hand. We finally Two got a big number. Is. We're going to keep it because it's in our range. We're looking at five through nine, maybe five, six, five, six. Two bamboos. So we're at 66 tiles Three now. Bamboos. We're coming into, uh, after two picks, we'll be in the very middle of the game. Hmm. Okay. Oh, Joker exchange right there. Let's see if we can Six get it, though. Dots. If one of these other players has a three bam, though, we won't be able to get Three that. Bamboos. There it is. Shoot. Oh, darn it. I was really hoping we would get that. Shoot. Red Dragon. Okay, my sense is they, they might have switched their hand based on that. Okay, now here Three we have bamboos. a seven. So I would let the six go here, and the five dot would become Joker bait. Because we just got a little more strength here. Now we're going to need a Joker more because win. there's a seven crack out right now. We're at 60 tiles remaining. I would say we're probably, at this point, still an underdog because we have three discards plus Joker bait. We probably should let the five dot go and see if we can maybe get a Joker here. Seven characters. Oh, no. Now we need two Jokers. East Wind. White Dragon. Nobody seems to want that. Let's discard the nine. nine bamboos. Part of me is just wondering if we should switch to five, six, five, six, since the sevens are out. North wind. I think we have we have a little time to wait. We're in the middle game. Six dot. Still. Oh, there goes a six dot though. No. Nine characters. Yeah, I think we need to just continue with. Let's see. Eight. Let's let the white dragon go. White dragon. So there's six, seven, eight, pair five. We'll let the five dot go next. I held it South wind. instead of discarding it at 60 tiles because we're kind of in between five, six, five, six 
and five through two nine characters. But I think because we're heading into the end game in two Seems picks, win. we need to let this five dot go. Although look what just came in. Five, seven, Eight seven, dollars. nine, five, seven, seven, nine. We would need only one Joker for that Four seven. Characters. Five dot, none are out. Seven dot, one is five out. Bamboos. We could switch to five, seven, seven, nine. It's kind of a late game switch. Oh. The sweet spot for switching is Flower. 70 tiles. So well, there's our winner, 135 Dragon. 135 Dragon. Jokers are nice, absolutely. They're playing the same hand. Uh, well, no, that's not the same hand. One, three, five, one, three odds in one suit. Over here, competitor for tiles, six, seven, eight, nine. And then of course over here, we're trying for five through nine or five, seven, seven, nine. It kind of came around, but a bit late. All right, let's play again. We're gonna jump over here. All right, let's see if we can get a nice, nice strong deal. We have a couple of jokers and a pung of white dragons. Okay, this is where this can be a chat, even though we have a pung, it doesn't happen very often, but it, it can be an encumbrance too, if you don't have tiles to go with it. In this case, we do. We have year tiles. So I would hold any tile that can be used in the year category, and then I would break these out as best I can, pass defensively. So I'm thinking a year hand, targeting the white dragon, Okay, so here's five, six. We really can't use those. Uh, let's see here. How do we want to break this out? I think it's going to be risky no matter how you slice this. How about five, eight, nine? At least the eight, nine is on the edge. We are giving them one efficient tile, but eight, nine is on the edge. Okay, here's a couple year tiles. Right here and here. Oh, this is going to be a little bit risky, but I think we should go for it. Now, since we have no flowers, we can make this a little bit better by letting go of the green dragon. We could maybe play the first hand under the year or the concealed hand. Okay, we have more year tiles. One more here. And we have tiles we can pass, so we can keep going. So let's see, two, zero, two, three. If we can get one more wind in here, I would probably commit to that concealed hand. No keepers, but we did get a red dragon, although we're going across, so we have to pass. Let's see, two, two, three, three, the three. One of the things I was thinking is that we could maybe, oh, that's risky. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep the three. I don't want to pass a one, three, five like that. Even that right there is a bit risky. We got wins. Okay, that's kind of a surprise. Okay, so now we're going to the right. We can pass the seven. Northeast. We have year tiles. We can maybe play the concealed hand or the first hand. So really we don't need the three, bam. And we could probably let one of these wins go. Let's see here. Let's let the east go. 
we have no flowers, so I wouldn't think about playing the fourth hand down under wins, for example. Okay, so this is looking much better for the concealed hand. We can even pass three. And we have a hand with no gaps. I'd say we would, we're a front runner right now, even if we don't get a, a keeper here. We need, we have a weakness. We have two weaknesses though, two crack three dot. So we do have a couple of weaknesses. But now we have an option right there. It's an option. Okay, let's discard the six. Six here. So we have a year hand. Uh, we have three, two discards. Five. We're definitely a front runner on this one. So we need to keep an eye on year tiles big time. And we do need a south. East wind. I would keep that north just for a little while. We could potentially switch to the Three concealed characters. news hand. Okay, we're concealed, so we're not taking anything. North wind. We might be able to play that concealed news hand because we have two, three consecutive tiles. Seven characters. Okay, now here's a flower. I would give up on the news concealed hand. North wind. We might be able to play the second Five. hand down. I would hold that flower just for a little while. Four dots. Just to see what comes in. We have two. Uh, really, we don't need that because we have Three a pung of dragons. Yeah, we don't need that at all. I would Four say we're characters. definitely in the year category. We don't need Four this flower. Characters. We don't have the other dragons, and we have almost news. Five characters. It looks like nobody's playing wins, so I think we're okay there. Red dragon. We just need to get the pair. Let's let, actually, you know what? Five dots. Maybe we could play two, three dragon. Three dots. Hmm. That is a hand with no gaps, but I don't think we should call it because we don't have a strong enough hand to expose two jokers. If we had a multiple Five in here with number tiles, I would I would reconsider. Okay, now here we have potential for the dragon hand. I think I would let the winds go at this point. West wind. Okay, so we have two, three dragon, or maybe the first hand. Eight bamboo. Two, three dragon, or the first hand. Three dots. There goes another three dot. I would let it go. We're not strong enough, I don't think yet. Nine characters. We need a multiple in here with number tiles. There's one. Okay, now let's see. Two, three, three crack. We don't need the dragon with a pair of threes. Green dragon. All right, so now we're looking at the first hand or the concealed hand. We let a west Four go bamboos. at the time. Uh, we have no no south. Well, now we have no west and two are out. Three characters. Okay, now here, I would probably go ahead and commit because we have a multiple there. I would Kong. Kong. And then I would let the flower go because it's the riskiest tile we have. And wow. no flowers are out. So with the two, three crack Kong, we don't need the three dot. Four characters. Okay, so let's let the winds go. East wind. Three crack Kong, we need to pung the two, and we need to pung, we need to pung both twos. Nine characters. This two bam is an option for us. So we, we have two discards. We're at 69 tiles remaining. I'd say we're we're probably a front runner now. We can Kong the, West wind. the white dragon. We just need one good pick for the other two. Flower. So I would say we're probably a front runner on this one. Sounds so it good. changed. We were an underdog big time. Four bamboos. Oh, there's the south. 
shucks. So, yeah. I was kind of hoping we could do that concealed hand, but this is this worked out okay. Red dragon. I'm I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable because we have Bang singles for blue. our twos. So we are in a we have weakness. Four bamboos. We need a two. <laughs> North wind. Any two will do. We're not being greedy. North That's wind. not too much to ask, I don't think, to draw a two Six or a dragon. Bamboos. Or not a dragon, a joker. This is a hand of least resistance, so we can use jokers. One bamboo. Hmm. That's another way that you can really Easy adjust win. your position. Because if you're playing a hand of least resistance, that's a hand that's indestructible. Easy well, win. relatively indestructible. Five dots. Okay, now one dot, none are out. We need to let that go. Two characters. Okay, so that we we need. I would pung it. I would just take hmm. it. We don't know where it is, especially with a one band one Kong. Dot. Somebody could have our two. One dot. Maybe they're playing like numbers. Two characters. Okay, I kind of thought Six that was going to happen, but I'm okay with that. We have only one more discard and we're still in the middle game. I'm hoping we'll draw our three, three crack. Dots. Eight characters. Six bamboos. Three bamboos. Okay, we need a joker keeper. Four dots. No. Green dragon. Five characters. Four dots. We need a joker keeper. Our turn is coming up now. Three bamboos. We got it. No, we don't got it. Darn it. We have that already. Three dots. Two bamboos. Two Shoot. bamboos. Oh, there goes the two. All right. So two twos are out. Eight characters. Four crack can go. Four characters. Nine bamboos. Nine characters. Five bamboos. Okay, we need a two dot. Oh my gosh, we got a joker. Green dragon. Green dragon. We we need a two dot. Or the three crack here. Six characters. We're in the end game. I'd say we should play to win. We have two only bamboos. two discards. Eight characters. We have two good discards. I think we should play to win. Nine bamboos. So this is that risk assessment where you decide um, whether or not you're going to play to win or, or fold. And I think we should play to win. We have two discards, and they're both One three dragon. are out there. Okay, let's Kong. Kong. Two characters. So if nothing else, people are going to Nine maybe bamboos. go on the defense here. Six characters. This three crack is still, oh, it's out. Someone discarded it. Nine Where is characters. it? Oh, it's right there. All right. So let's discard that two, two bam. bamboos. So we're ready to win. We got ready to win in the end game. Red dragon. West wind. So a joker will do it, or the two dot, of course. One character. Joker Come. keeper. Oh, like numbers it is. South wind. Seven bamboos. Seven dots. Okay, two dot. Now, if anybody makes an exposure in the end game like that, they're playing to win. If they draw a hmm. two dot, they might discard it. Three bamboos. Okay, there's, that's kind of a surprise. 
three bam Six after a seven dot Kong. They may be playing the first bamboo. odd hand. Eight bamboos. I'm playing to win here. Nine bamboos. Seven characters. We have three picks Seven left. Seven dots. Three picks. They got a joker. Ah, uh, they had our twos. Darn it. <laughs> okay, so two, four, six, eight. Pretty hand. All right, over here, ready to win on a flower for like numbers. Over here, six, seven, eight, nine, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. All right. Next game, here's a table ready for us. That was a fun journey. We came a long way. All right, here we have a pair of flowers, otherwise a widespread. So I would focus on number tiles and let those the east and the dragon go. Focus on number tiles. We have all the eights. Actually, since we have all the eights, I would keep the dragon in this case because we could play like numbers with eights. Let's see, with a four, six, I suppose we could try for maybe the first hand. We do have tiles to pass. So I would say either evens or like numbers with eights. No keepers. We have tiles we can pass. We're looking for eights or maybe a two crack, I suppose. I think like numbers with eights looks pretty good. We got an eight and nines. Look at that. Like numbers with nines. I would I would let go of the two, four, six, eight. We have no two. So we have eight, nine of some kind here. Eight, nine, but we have a pair of flowers. We need to leverage the flowers. Like numbers with eights. We have jokers, so I wouldn't play a pair hand, even though we have eight, nine. Let's see, so we have a six and a four. I would just pass these on here. Hopefully we'll keep going. Okay. So let's see, the nines probably are gonna go. Well, isn't that interesting? Thank you. Like numbers with eights. So let's pass the dragon and the nine. We only need one dragon. This is looking pretty good. We have only four discards. We're a contender right now. And we just got a keeper and a flower. Wow. Interesting. Okay. We're going to the right. Let's see here. I think we can play like numbers with eights. Let the dragon go and play the Kong hand. Now that we have a flower generously offered during the Charleston. So we can pass two or three. Maybe the dragon here. 
because we could still play the concealed hand and let a flower go. I don't know if we're going to get another eight. So maybe we pass just two, but let's see how many our opponent wants first. I don't like to offer. I want to wait because if they want one tile, no, thank you. I don't think so. They're delaying. Sometimes I just want to prove it, but then I go on tilt if they want one tile. I do not want to pass one tile. I refuse to do that. So we're going to say no. This is one of the th reasons why I get a little frustrated playing where we aren't able to do a true negotiation online because I want the option to back out. If I say I want two and they say they want one, we need to have the option to say no thank you or decline because that's how it's done in in when you play with humans when you play in li in real life nine anyway two. okay so we're in between the two cons the two like number hands we're a front runner for sure nine dots so now whether we play the first hand i would leave one of these eights as a pair two bamboos so i wouldn't just calm if a tile goes down two or i would want to leave one of those pairs in hand in case the, the tiles go down and we're not ready so for example if we kong the eight Red bam dragon. i would want the eight crack to be my pair and then maybe kong the eight dot or bamboo as opposed to thinking that we can use the eight dot as our pair and kong the other two eights that would be that would be risky Four dots. So let's see. If we get an eight dot, I would throw the flower One probably. Character. But if we get if we get a white dragon, I would play the concealed Nine hand. Dots. But if we get another eight, I would probably play the ones Nine the bamboos. Kong hand. Three bamboo. All right, let's just see what happens here. So we're at 86 tiles. We're still in the begin game. First the second Nine wall characters so we're in the second wall we have two discards we're a front runner two dots nine bamboos nine crack is out nine characters so we have a two and two twos and a three no three Easy. three twos and a and a three are out so hmm. my guess is no one's playing a year hand Red dragon I'm kind of thinking no one's playing a year hand at the moment. Seven bamboos. Because we need a white dragon if we play the concealed hand. Four dots. Nine characters. We're closer to the One dragon dot. hand than we are the, there we go, eight dot. Five characters. Okay, so now we're... If we play the exposable Five hand, characters. we're two away. If we play the concealed hand, we're Four one away characters. from ready. Six bamboos. Five we're bamboos. set to call if we play the exposable hand. Four characters. The fact that no white dragons are going down I'm white thinking, dragon. oh, there it is. Nobody wanted it. Nobody Nine wanted the character. white dragon. Okay, so let's just wait. Nine when it, when a tile goes down, that's when we'll decide. North wind. Pung. Because if we can get a white dragon, we'll be ready to Three win dots. on a triple weight. Any eight would, would be a winner. Pung. Green dragon. Okay, we're gonna pass, of course. Six Sixty. Dots. We're at sixty-seven tiles. We're coming into the middle of the game, Five so we want to pick our hand. 
we want to pick our hand in the next pick. Seven bamboos. So we're going to dig our heels in. Green dragon. In the, with the next pass or the next pick. I mean, at the moment, we can't act on anything Green anyway. Characters. We're just waiting for our tiles to go down or pick them. Five dots. Seven dot. Okay, so this is Seven where we dots. need to nail it down. 60 tiles remaining. Two bamboos. Hmm. Huh. Hesitation on the discard there. Four dots. Seven characters. Oh, okay, no Six eights are characters. out. Oh, because probably we have them all. They're in the wall, I'm guessing. Five characters. North wind. Flower. Okay, let's Kong. Kong. We're just going to push it. Red dragon. We have our pair. We have jokers. We're one away. 53 tiles remaining. We want to try to be Green ready bamboos. to win by the end of the third wall, which is 41 tiles. Flower. So we have about two more picks. Green dragon. Uh, no one bams are out. One bamboo. Nobody wants the green dragon. One bamboo. Nine dots. So the nines are going down, which is good for our eights. Six characters. There's the eight. All right. Green dragon. So now we're ready to win on a double weight, either the eight bam or the eight crack. Four One characters. or the other. And we're stealth mode. We have a Kong Three of flowers. Characters. Nobody's going to know what we're playing. Two they might be able to play, you know, with or do a process of elimination Six based bamboos. on our discards. But I think our discards really are not very telling. We have four, five, four, five, six, eight, four, five, six, nine in front of us. Six I think we have a really good chance of winning this one. Red Dragon. So we were, oh, I forgot to tell when we were ready to win. Were we ready to win Green by the bamboos. end of the third wall? I think maybe we were. I think we two were. Characters. A double weight means we're ready on one of two, two tiles. Bamboos. We can win on an eight bam or an eight crack. That's a double Green weight. Because we have two pairs and two jokers. Seven bamboos. Uh, actually, even if an eight dot is discarded, we have Seven a triple characters. weight here. Because any eight will give us a win. This is a triple weight. Yep. Thank you, Judy. This is a triple weight. Thank you, Kristen. Good one job. Character. Yeah, I misspoke. We're on a triple weight. So one, one of three bamboo. tiles will give us a win. White and we're stealth mode also. One bamboo. Eight bamboo. There it is. Mahjong. Mahjong. Okay, so... The player on our left had our eight, six, seven, eight, east and west with a run. So we have our eights here, like numbers with eights. This is where our, our eight crack was here, east and west with a run. So we were fighting each other a little bit here, five or six, seven, north and south with probably five, six, seven. They had our eight also. And then over here, Two, three, four, five, Pung Kong. They have two discards there. All right, let's play again. It's W A I T, wait, because we're waiting to win on one of three tiles. W A I T, wait. So the stronger your weight, the greater potential you have of winning. And that can help you decide on, that can help you with risk assessment. Okay, so now we have three pair, eight crack, two dot, and an east. We might be able to play a quint with the no jokers, at least for now. But we also have one, two, three, four. So I would not play a quint with no jokers. Let's see, let's let the east go. 
we'll let the East go. If we get a six in here, we could maybe try for an even hand. Here we go, six, eight. So we have a hand in here with no gaps. We have two actually, one, two, three, four, or two, four, six, eight. Let's see, the nine can go, the dragon can go. Two, four, six, eight in here. Let's see, I would not consider the pair hand because we have a pair of twos. I'm thinking two, four, six, eight, Pong Kong, second or third hand down on the right. That is a hand of least resistance. We've got an eight dot in here now. I would let the one go at this point. I'm thinking we're going to play an even hand here. Two, eight. We might be able to play that second hand down, actually. Two, eight. We need a six dot, and then we need to build the eights. That's funny. We just played a hand with eights. Okay, we're just waiting here for tiles. Six, eight. Look at that. <laughs> we have two, four, all two, four, six, eight in here almost. Look at that. Okay, we definitely want to keep going. I'm thinking two, four, six, eight, second hand down, probably. Two, four, six, eight, second hand down with eights. Let's let the six dot or six crack go. We need a six dot in here. And then we we need to let the flower go. Okay, no keepers, which is fine. I would keep the six for a little bit. We could do two, four, six, eight. Oh my gosh, look. We could do two, four, six, eight the other way here. We're going across. We have no two bam. Let's let it go. That would be a gap. No keepers. That's fine by me because we're looking for a very small set of numbers here. What is going on? That's weird. Okay. Okay, so here's an interesting development here, but they want three. We can do the concealed hand, but we have a gap, no six. I would pass three and stick with that second hand down, even though we have a gap. It's a single tile. Oh, look what we got, four dot. All right, so now here we go. Let's let the six crack go. Six. Cancer. All right, so now two, four, six, eight. Probably we could maybe even play like numbers with eights again. Four dots. Okay, we're going to let that go, of course. We really just need the six dot in there. Seven bamboos. Oh, look. We got a keeper. Four dots. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you what position we're in. We have a hand with no gaps and three discards. So we're a front runner. Even though we're, we don't Three have a bamboos. six dot, 
we can get ourselves to a ready pay, a place and then win by, win by discard. <clears throat> Three oh, let's see. We are, yeah, we have three discards. So we're a front runner. Three dots. Even though we have a single gap, that we can we, we should be able to fill it, at least at the moment, since it's not down. It'd be really nice to get a Joker or an eight crack in here. Green dragon. Nine characters. Wow, part of me is thinking if we should switch to like numbers with eights. Four bamboos. We're one away from six bamboos. We're only one tile off of the like Five number bamboos. hand than we are with the two, four, six, eight hand. Seven characters. So if we draw hmm. a red dragon. Maybe we could let dragon. maybe we could let the two and the four go. Use the two dot as joker bait. West wind. Or if we Come draw on. a flower, I probably would switch to like numbers four with characters. eights. We're at 82 tiles remaining, so we're just now after this discard or after the next pick, we'll Six be in the dots. second wall. There's our tile. Nobody wanted it, by the way. Nobody wanted West that wind. that six dot. East wind. Okay, that's interesting. Nine dots. Okay, we're in the we're in the middle game now. Seventy tiles. Seven dots. I would say that we're probably closest to the second hand down under evens. Nine bamboos. Three. Characters. But we might be able to switch to like numbers with eights. Hmm. Okay, so now we know what they're playing. One through one, three, five, three seven, characters. nine, and one suit. Odds. Eight characters. That's our time, but we're not ready for it. Nine dots. So if we play like numbers with eights, so that can be our pair. Otherwise, okay, there's the second six dot. So it's it, it's getting a little bit tight on that that two four six eight hand. We're at seventy tiles remaining. This is the sweet two spot bonds. to switching your hand, and that's a pair for us. So we're gonna let it go. Nobody wanted it, by the way. So North wind. that probably will not be good Joker bait. Five dots. I'm kind of wondering if we should switch to like numbers with eights and Five dragons bamboos. because the sixes are down. We don't really have to pick a hand One yet dot. because we're playing a concealed hand. So it's not like Three we can call characters. for tiles anyway. And the six dot, if it goes down, we're not ready for it. We need a eight crack Seven to help characters. us Kong. The only thing that would force us into a decision is the eight bam. Green dragon. So we're in the middle of the game now. Three dots. So this is when you want to know what hand you're playing. Because of that, I would switch to two characters. Like numbers with eights. Three like dots. like numbers with eights. Because we're at that middle mark. You want to know characters. your hand. Okay, six crack can go. Six characters. Oh, somebody got the their first news, news with flowers. Joker's help, absolutely. Okay, here they have. Ooh, they have their pairs are super weak. That that's challenging here, especially here's someone. It looks like they're maybe trying for one two one two or like numbers with ones. And then of course here we switch to like numbers with eights because the six dots were going down. All right, next game. So what do you guys think about speed to ready and this idea of these milestones? Any, any uh, opinions on that? Any comments, input, feedback?
my goodness. Hold uh, Let's see. Okay, we have a pung of fives. If you start with a pung, it, it can be very challenging to make it work. We're going to have a make it work moment here. We've got five, seven, six, five, six, seven. And here we have ones and twos. I would focus on the number tiles and let the winds go. So we have all efficient tiles here, five, six, seven. Even the seven can be pretty efficient. It's just one tile off center. So some kind of five, six, seven, we're just going to hoard number tiles. It helps with decisions. Oh, good. Thank you, Sue. Okay, we have a four. Really, the four is not all that helpful. Okay, so let's pass. Actually, you know what? We have a joker, a big multiple, and a pair. We might be able to force a quint in here. Fives with west. Of course, we're going to need another joker. I'm thinking the seven can go. What do you guys think of a quint? We got a five and an east. The east is an option. We have discards, so we can keep going. Okay, we have an east. That's an option. So let's pass. Oh, yeah, we want to keep going here. We're going to try for a quint. We have an option with the east-west. No keepers. Okay, east it is. So now we can let the west go. And Joker Bait doesn't really, Joker Bait is not good during the Charleston. Just let it go. Let Use it to help you pass safely. Okay, so we just need help with a five. Five crack, we can Kong the east. We can pass these just fine. Okay, now wait. Oh, I was going to say that we have some potential for the concealed hand, but I think we should go ahead and play the quint. Okay, our opponent is delaying here. Two. We can do two. Okay, so let's see here. Let's pass the west with a three crack. I suppose we can keep the six just in case we decide to switch to news concealed, but I don't think so. We have four discards, so we're a contender. We have a hand with no gaps. 
we can even call Linda. for the east so i'd say we're a contender on this one oh we have joker bait so i'd still say we're a contender north wind. right now because we need more jokers we need at least one, one more wind. joker six bamboos a flower well that Two that does give us another option the yes, five yes. six quint now we could do five dot six crack three characters so let's just hold it and see if we can get flowers so three we're characters. we're in between there's a joker nine characters okay so with this situation east wind let's kong Kong. We'll let the flower go. Flower. So now we have Joker bait, and I'd say we're a front runner. We have only two discards, and Four we're bamboos. still in the middle, the begin game, first, uh, second wall. Four dots. So, oh, no worries, Deborah. One bamboo. There's the five crack. Six characters. Okay, we just need a Joker One at this character. point. We just need a joker. Four dots. South. I wind. would love to draw a five crack. South. Oh, wind. Let's just tuck that in. I don't want to accidentally One discard dot. a five crack. Five characters. Okay, we're going to quint. Quint. So we're risking only Six one joker characters. and all we need to do is pick a joker at this one point. Dot. The statistic is that you will draw 1.6 jokers from the wall. Two characters. So I'm pretty sure we're going to draw a joker from the wall. One character. Oh, six dot. Darn it. Six dots. Pung. one character oh <laughs> six dots six dots four bamboos three bamboos flower there mahjong we got it We got the quint, like numbers with fives, and the east. So over here, two, four, six, eight, no gaps. Pong, Kong, Pong, Kong. Over here, six, seven, eight. Oh, dragons. They're, they, they need an eight band. They're going for the concealed consecutive hand. And here, let's see, seven, nine, seven, eight, nine. I think they're gathering still all right thank you for the kudos all right now we wait we wait now so when you have a joker and a big multiple and a potential for a quint go for it especially if you have a pair and a big multiple and jokers that just supports the trend, really. Watch for that trend. We just need players at the table. One more player. We have all, all brown belts at the table. That's nice. All right. So we have multiples in here, sixes. We have all the sixes. Six bam pair, six dot pair, or pung. Six dot, or six bam pung. Five, six, seven. We have no flowers though. So I wouldn't think about playing 
for example, like numbers with sixes. I think I would look for the potential for five, six, five, six. If we can get a five, bam. But otherwise, I'd say five, six, seven of some kind in here. Five, six, five, six. A, a six, a five, bam would be ideal. Five, bam would be really nice. We could play five, six, five, six, pong, kong, pong, kong. Okay, so we have a dragon. At this point, I would hold it because we do have tiles we can pass. No problem. Now we hold on one second. We have five, six, seven, six. That's not helpful. Five, six, seven, eight. But we have a pun of sixes. We do have five through nine here. Do you see that there? Five through nine. But we would have to throw away a pun of sixes. I would not do that. I think because we have no flowers, we can let that dragon go. And I would I would maybe keep an eye out for a five bam. We got a four. That's not helpful though. Let's see here. We can pass these. We could maybe keep the four. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I was thinking we could keep the four bam and let the seven go and play evens, but we have no two. We have no gaps with five, six, seven of some kind. I'm still hoping for a five bam. There it is. So we have our hand. I would probably still hold the six bam. A two crack did come in. Okay, two, eight, seven can go. Five, six, five, six, no gaps. Two multiples and one is big. Big multiples are pair uh, Pung Kong. But yes, Riley's running around like a little maniac because I think Dave got home. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. It's about that time. Hey, we got a keeper right there. Okay, so let's pass. Let's let that go. Five, six, five, six looks really good. Five, six, five, six looks fantastic to me. We're one away from set. We just need a, another five. Otherwise, we can pung and calm. Five bam, five dot, if you please. There's the five dot. We're set. We're a front runner. We are a front runner on this. We have three tiles to pass, and we can call for everything now. Five, six, five, six, six hand down under consecutive run. We can, we can pass two. They're deli Oh, there we go. We can pass three. Why did I say two? We can pass three. Did I say three or two? Doesn't matter. We're passing three. Wouldn't that be nice if we can get, let's see, are we? Oh, we're, we're west. No hand from heaven. I guess it would be an earthly hand. But we have three discards. I'm not expecting a keeper. It would be a nice surprise, but no. Okay, three discards. All right, we're off now. Two dots. Here we go. Eight dots. West wind. Hmm. Oh, Joker, up for grabs. Green Dragon. Oh, four. So Nine close, bamboo. Riley. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hashtag Riley. Six characters. Oh, wrong six. Seven dots. Okay, three discards. Come on now. We need Nine keepers. Bamboos. There's one. Eight characters. Awesome. Two discards. This is great. Three dots. 91 tiles remaining. Six characters. Another six. Nine bamboos. Okay, let's see. Nobody wanted the three. Three dots. White dragon. Seven characters. White dragon. Okay, keeper. Four characters. Two characters. Seven characters. We're good. We're good. Sound even good. with Riley running around like a little maniac. Okay, four can go. Four bamboos. We're going to be able to do this stealth mode because we'll have only one exposure. Red dragon. Seven characters. We have efficient tiles here too, by the way. Not that we're moving anywhere. Joker exchange. West wind. All right, we're we're total stealth One mode. Dot. Nobody knows what we're playing. We are on a quad weight flower. Quad weight. This is rare. We can win on any one of these tiles. Nine characters. Red dragon. white dragon this is a good great result we're ready to win at 71 Green tiles dragon. flower two bamboos there it is with a joker mahjong Woohoo! We got five, six, five, six. Consecutive run number six. That was sweet. Really nice. Here, news concealed. News concealed. They have a couple of options there. Here we have one, two, three, or probably the concealed, the concealed consecutive hand. Here we have, whoa, ready to win on an east or a four bam. They're probably not very happy with me. Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to play one more game. Ah, uh, shucks. What happened? Return. I don't know why that happens. That's really weird. All right, so here's another weird situation here. We have a pung and a pear. We're going to go for the quint again. We even have an extra joker starting out. Let's see if we can get twos. I'd probably keep that one just in case. Okay, we're going to try for a quint again. One uh, west with twos. We got a one. Well, we have no one. Oh, there's an option. Oh my gosh, that's weird. That's exactly what happened last time. East and west. I think we had east and west with fives. Now we have east and west with twos. Let's see. Oh, look, we got the one crack. Darn. One crack, one dot. Let's pass north. Okay, now here, I would not pass two. I would not pass two dragons here. We're going to let the one crack go.
even though we had some potential for one, two, one, two, we still might be able to do it. We're going to keep going. We still might see one, two, one, two come in, but we do have potential for a quint. Let's just see what happens. Are we going to keep going? Somebody's delaying here. Okay. So let's see if we get that one crack. Okay, there's a one dot now. One, two. I would let the east go. We do have a potential for one, two, one, two, if we can get the one crack back. There it is. One crack. I would just pass two. Because we still have the potential for the quint, but probably one, two, one, two. I would probably play one, two, one, two. We have a pair and a pung, but we also have a pung of ones. We can pass two. Let's see if, oh, they want three. We can do two. I would wait in between for a bit. We got a niece back. Okay, so let's let's let the seven go. Seven. Characters. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a Joker with the East. east oh no! There it goes. We'll pass. South wind. Four characters. A five dot. East wind. That's what we had last time. Red Dragon, East Wind, North Wind. Okay, we don't need that eight. Eight characters. Red Dragon. Six characters. Okay, we're looking for one, two, one, two, probably. Unless, of course, we draw the west. Five dots. E one eighty six tiles. I'm thinking we should play one, two, one, two. Okay, what happened? Oh no, somebody lost connection here. Seven characters, one bamboo. We're looking for one, two, one, two. Nine characters. East is out. East wind, one bamboo. Green dragon, two bamboos. Okay, let's see. 
Four bam can go. Four bamboos. One dot. That's a pound for us, so we're okay on that. Red dragon. Three dots. No, we don't need that. We seven need one, two, one, two, one, two. We're at 74 one tiles. Dragon. Okay, seven we still have a little bit of time to develop this hand here. Six characters. A three, no, we don't need a three. Six we have dots. one, two, one, two. We could Kong the two Seven dot dots. and Pung the one. Crack. We could even Kong the two, but that would expose Nine two bamboos. jokers. So I don't know if I would Seven do that. Dots. We have a hand with no gaps. Three characters. There's another two option. Oh, there's one out. Nine bamboos. There's one Green out. Dragon. South wind. Don't need an eight. Eight bamboos. One, two, one, two. Oh, Ooh, there's a joker now. Five bamboos. Joker up for grabs. Nine characters. Now I would commit. And Two we're at bamboos. 60 tiles. So this is when you want to commit to a hand anyway. We're set on one, Five two, one, characters. two. And this will not be good Three Joker Day because the Easts are out. Nobody's playing wins, apparently. Three characters. So we're going to let that go now. West win. Joker. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thanks for Seven coming. Dots. All right. One, two, one, two. Five bamboos. Oh, we don't want to hold on to a flower. Flower. Somebody threw a joker. Oh, was that a robot doing that? Oh, we get another turn. No nice. Dots. Excellent. Okay. We got sixes wind. here. Flower. Eight bamboos. Oh, they got their joker back. Two bamboos. Okay. I, I would dots. push to win here. We want to try to be ready to win in the next Six two picks. Dots. We have two discards, so our tiles need to go down. There we go. I would Kong. Kong. We want to try to be ready to win by the end Nine of this wall. Characters. We have two picks. Six characters. Okay, so that should be a safe tile. Four dots. We can put that over here. One bamboo. Okay, seven bam, one is out, three six cracks are out. Seven bamboos. All right, we didn't quite make it to ready by the end of the third wall, but we're close. Nine bamboos. We're very close to making that milestone. Three dots. I think we still have a good potential to win. South wind. Okay, four crack can go. Four characters. We have six crack, three are out, so we're in a really good spot right now. Four characters. Let's Five see. Bamboos. These jokers are up for Nine grabs. Dots. Two crack would be really nice. Eight characters. Are they playing like numbers? Kong. Yes. West wind. Eight eight. Six bamboos. Six dots. North wind. Okay. We're in, we're in the end game. Seven. I would characters. love to draw one of these twos here. Red dragon. One character. Pung. Pung. All right. Now we're ready to win on a two dot. Six characters. I call this a multiple weight. It really doesn't Green mean much dragon. because it's still ready to win on one tile. But we could win on a joker, too. If we draw Green two crack, dots. we could win. So ha being having a multiple weight Nine is bamboos. fine and good because you still have one of two tiles, North either wind. a two dot or a joker, or in this case, Green a two bamboos. crack. 
There are two eight cracks available over here too. Northwind. One of those is available. There we go. Two characters. We got it. Mahjong. Woohoo! One, two, one, two. All right. That quit looked really good, but one, two, one, two came in. Follow the trend. Here we have an assortment. I think they lost connection. Here, 2468, they needed the two dot, but we were in their business. Here, 6788, they needed to pung the eights. So we had a little bit of uh, competition for tiles. I think we could play one more hand. One more hand, hopefully, if we can get people at the table. One more, one more hand. Mm. All right, what do we got now? Let's see here. We have a one dot pair. That's what we're going to start with. We've got wins. Almost news. Okay, so now, oops. All right, we can do nine crack four dot with an eight bam, let's say. Actually, I think, yes, yes, that's good. All right. So let's see how this goes. I wouldn't pick a hand yet. I would wait and see if wins come in. There's an east and a two. I would say we have a chance for the concealed news hand. Even though we have a gap, no north, we can use jokers. We have an extra east. But we also have some potential for the first wind or the fifth wind hand. There's another west. Okay, so with east and west, I would probably let go of that concealed hand and break up the ones and focus on wins. I would focus on wins. Probably the fifth hand, fifth hand down with four flowers, maybe. No keepers here. We definitely want to keep going. Uh, what's happening here? Who stopped? Oh. Um. Who stopped the Charleston? Three tiles? Dang it. Oh, shoot. I don't remember who stopped it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Dang it. That is another one of my pet peeves about playing here. I want to know who freaking stopped the Charleston. Sorry about my phraseology. Okay, here we go. Darn Seven it. Seven characters. Who stopped the Charleston? Not that it matters anymore. Dang one it. One character. One dot. Our, oh, four discards. We have four discards, so we're we're a contender. South wind. Okay, we can Kong. Kong. Even though we have a gap, it's a single tile. Six bamboo. It's a single tile. We need, of course, flowers. South wind. But we need one good pick, Four and we'll bamboos. be we'll be set. 
Eight, we eight, have three eight. discards, so I would say we're probably still a contender until we get that north. Eight characters. And, and a flower will do. So now we're Four set. Characters. I'd say we're a front runner now. Because we had two we had a Kong. Characters. We had a we were able to Kong for an exposure, plus we got a keeper. And that put us at two discards right now. So we're Kong. a front runner now. Even though we have a gap, Seven bamboo. we need that north. Six characters. Two characters. Two dots. Flower. I would wait, because there are more. There are more flowers. We do not need to call a flower Four and expose bamboos. a joker. I would wait on that. Well, we've already let it go, but you don't need to call a flower and expose a joker. Four you can just wait. There are eight flowers, so Seven there's plenty. Bamboos. There's plenty more. Even Nine if somebody bamboos. else has a Kong. Two bamboos. Now, if we're Kong. ready, to, if we're if we have one discard, I would call Two it. Characters. If another flower goes down after we have maybe one discard left, I would call it because then we'd be ready to win. East wind. That's a pair for us. Six dots. Now, this player to our list, left has a nine crack here, but there's a nine dot in front of them. So I don't, I don't think they need that. They're playing a three, six, nine hand or six, seven, eight, nine. I think we need to let this eight crack go. Eight they could be playing six, seven, eight, nine. Five bamboos. Six, seven, eight, nine. They can't West be playing three, six, nine with a pung. What is that? That's a pung for us. Hmm. Okay, so yes, I would keep going on this one. One character. So if a flower goes down, I would Kong. Eight bamboos. Okay, so now three, six, uh, let's see. Six dot, Pung. They could be doing the third hand down. Seven bamboos. They're doing the third hand down, or they're doing six, seven, eight, nine. Three dots. We need a north. Ah, hmm. oh, we got skipped. Nine bamboos. Okay, now flower. The player to the Four left stopped dots. it. Okay, thank you, Anne. I don't feel bad now. Oh, my goodness. All right, we need a north and a flower. Flower. Okay, I would Kong. Kong. And now we'll discard nine. And we're ready to win Nine on a north. Dots. And we're at 72 tiles, and everybody else now has to decide. Are they going to play to win, or are they going to fold? Because if anybody Seven draws a characters. north, none of these players need a north. No way, no how. So a north is going to be a discard for everybody, except us, of Six course. Dots. Seven All right, now it's just a matter of time at, at the end to find Nine out bamboos. who's who's playing to win also. Because they Nine may bamboos. think to themselves, is she ready to win at this early stage? Eight dots. I'm hoping we'll draw it. Three characters. Oh, maybe they're doing three, six, nine knitted. There was a hesitation on that three crack. They could be doing three, Two six, characters. nine knitted on the left with white dragons. One bamboo. There was a hesitation on the three crack. Two dots. North. We need a north. Five bamboos. One dot. And we're letting it all hang out. Everyone knows what we're playing. Seven dots. That's okay with me. Flower. We might even be able to do this pure. Here we now are pure. 
three bamboos. My north and we'll have a pure hand. Kong. Eight dots. All right, we've got Kong, a Kong. They could be playing to win. One character. Five bamboos. West wind. Seven dots. Six bamboos. Red dragon. Eight bamboos. Six bamboos. We're looking for a north. Eight dots. Six characters. Four dots. Seven dots. We need a north. One bamboo. We don't need a joker. Nine characters. One bamboo. We're going into the end game now. If anybody Eight has dots. a north, they're going to be in some pain. One dot. Green dragon. Flower. Four dots. To the right, to the right, to the right, right, right. Five bamboos. Three dot, don't need it. Three dots. So two jokers are locked in, I think. Wait, the three dot, that's, there's still one more. Six bamboos. All right. Six characters. Eight characters. Nope. East wind. Now they're all really going to know we need a north. We're in the end. Four dots. The end game here. Green dragon. Will anybody discard this north? That's what I want to know. Red dragon. I'm hoping we'll draw it. Two dots. Five characters. All right. Where's that north? Kong. Oh. North wind. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Woohoo. We got Mahjong. They're ready to win. They held on to that north. And this player, oh, my goodness. All right. So we got a pure hand out of that one. News with flowers over here. They held on to the norths over here. They got to a ready position, held on to the north over here. Three, one, three, five. They're playing. Wait, I'm not sure what they're doing there. Anyhow, all right, that's going to do it for this live stream. So, yeah, people were definitely playing defensive but they it was just a matter of people deciding are are they going to play to win or are they going to fold when you have this would be remember that matrix that i showed you that would have been an extreme risk because i have three exposures and no jokers that is beyond extreme impact right there so I, I would have folded for sure. Typically, when someone has two exposures, I even fold if I have a risky tile. But if based on what is what has been discarded and what is exposed, it's situational because sometimes it might look like someone's ready to win, but in fact, they're not. 
So it really just hap depends on what is happening at the table. It's very situational, which is why it's so important to use critical thinking, situational awareness, and social acuity. Those are the three primary skills. Those are all the skills that need to be developed in order to play this game well. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for the kudos on the wins. It was a good day. So the next time we will meet will be on Wednesday for the members only Let's Play live stream. If you are a fanatic or an obsessed player at Maj Life, you'll be able to join in on that Let's Play live stream from one to three. If you're not able to join, it'll be recorded so you won't miss it. You can watch it on the repost. Then we'll be back again on Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time for the Simply Social Let's Play live stream where we hang out and have a good time. We're going to hopefully have a name for our little furry woodland creature. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who. We're going to name that little guy maybe on Friday night. So if you want to be part of that little celebration, join us. I think the top name right now is Lucky. We're going to probably call him Lucky. We'll see. I think that's the leader, the leader of the, the voting that's going on on Facebook. So if you're if you're not part of my Facebook group, look for an email, uh, look for Maj Life or Michelle Frizzell on Facebook and you'll be able to join the group because we carry on lots of conversation there and votes and content, rules, etiquette, sportsmanship, skills, all Mahjong. Everything Mahjong. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and sign off. All right. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.